Hey guys, uh, Spencer here. Today I'm going to go over linear regression, everything that you really need to do in R. Uh, so let's get to it. So today I'll be using this beer data set that I have loaded up here. Uh, it's nothing special, it just gives like an overview on what type of beers are out there, or what the brands and the type of brewery, type of how many calories are inside of each of these brands and the carbohydrates. These are fictional uh, values, um, and also they don't really complete the entire picture. But anyways, the values that I'll be predicting will be the calories in relationship to the number of carbs that are existing inside of each of these particular uh, records that we have stored over here. So the very first thing that you would want to do is to set your working directory to wherever your beer.csv file or whatever file that you would want to read in. Uh, set it so that you can actually read in your data set into the actual R script. So I uh, use the function read.csv. I already read it in over here. Um, and then we want to take a look at it. So this is going to be the exploratory analysis piece that we would typically do when we want to figure out you know, what the data looks like essentially. So using uh, this function right here, the string value, very simple. Um, it, pretty much gives like a very great overview on what the data actually looks like. So we have our data types, characters, integers, numerics, how many observations we have, and the number of columns that we are given. So let's go a little bit deeper into the actual use of the linear regression. So let's get getting an idea on what the data looks like. So let's do this. So as I said, Earlier, we want to look at the relationship between carbs and calories. So actually, there's a really neat uh, function that I can use one where I don't have to reference um, the columns within beer. So instead of like calling your typical way, your beer of your well, dollar sign of your columns, you can just call out your your typical variables over here. Really nice shortcut. Uh, so let's take a look at the calories versus carbohydrates. Or no, your X is going to be the carbohydrates and your Y is going to be the calories because that is what you're trying to predict. So that is what that looks like right here. So once you plot your variables, your X and Y to see a general relationship between the two, we would want to look at a correlation between the two variables as well. So let us do that. So there is a really neat function here, core.test. Um, it basically compares the relationship between X and Y, but you can also add other variables as well to look at whether or not there's a correlation between multidimensional features. So let us do this. So let's do the carbohydrates and calories and look at the relationship between the two. So in general, this is a relatively strong relationship between the two. Uh, this is where the art on choosing whether or not your model is good enough, quote unquote, uh, but the essential idea here is that you want the correlation to be, you know, a higher. Uh, you want to be closer to one instead of like zero, where that means there's like no relationship at all. So in general, we can say this is a good relationship uh, in terms of the correlation uh, between the two variables. So after we put the correlation, well, we find out the correlation, we want to find the normality or whether and essentially whether or not the data follows a normal distribution. So we would use a we would use the function, the QQ norm function, in order to identify whether or not our variables, you know, somewhat follow the normal distribution, which is a key assumption in the linear regression use. So let's do that. Uh, carbohydrates, let's include a title. It's normal QQ plots on carbs. So in general, we want this plot to be, you know, as, as like a one-to-one -one slope wise relationship to be as possible um, in order for this to like follow the QQ plot. Obviously we're not going to have the like, you know, perfect data unless it's, you know, sort of fabricated, but in order for this to be like a straight, straight line, we would ideally ha have have like really normal data, but in this case we don't. So we can then sort of judge on whether or not that is indeed the case. 
uh, whether or not it follows this particular curve. So uh, we can always try to transform the data in order for this data set to be more normal uh, using like a log function. So we can do like um, log of carbohydrates uh, main is equal to your log of normal normal qq plot carbs uh, sort of like that but you you get the gist right you all you really need to do is like sort of transform that data in order for that data to be more more so following the linear relationship otherwise your model is not going to be as good as intended and so there is actually one thing that you could do in order for your um, your QQ norm plot to sort of match up on what you're trying to aim for, and that is the QQ line plot. So we can use that over here, QQ line on the carbohydrates as well. We can plot these two together, and we will get somewhat of a relationship between the two on where your data would ideally follow along that particular line on your QQ line. You can do something similar with your uh, QQ line on the log of your carbohydrates. It's basically the same thing to see whether or not your data were to follow that particular relationship. So you can easily play around with that and ideally you would want to follow that particular line in order for your data to be the best that it can possibly be or ideally possibly be. All right, now let's move on to the actual model creation. So this is going to be the linear model. Uh, we would typically use or assign the model um, a variable name. In this case, it would just be mod. I'll use the LM function, uh, which stands for the linear model. And as we can see here, it gives you the formula, the type of data, etc. Those are just the parameters. Um, so in general, when you are writing the relationship between your y and your x variable, you are going to write it in this type of particular format. So since I'm trying to predict calories with carbohydrates, I'll just do calories tilde carbohydrates, and that will create your model. You don't necessarily have to specify where your data set comes from since I already attached the beer data set, but you could you can easily just do that, uh, just append that, and you have your model over here. So let's go on and interpret what the model looks like. So interpreting the model. Okay. So first thing that I would typically do after I create the model is look at a summary of it. Summary. Bam. So we have the values over here. This is what the what the call looks like we have our residuals over here so the probably the most important piece uh, about what you want to look at is your these are your coefficients and whether or not they are significantly significantly well statistically significant uh, so in general you can use these values as to determine what type of threshold you would want to use on which variables to sort of like delete from your model or append or do whatever you would typically want to do um, in the I guess the entire um, in general the statistics uh, universe if you're not in the like the biological um, area then you would typically use a acceptance threshold of about five percent or 0 0.05 which is around here uh, there are some industries that definitely use a lot lower uh, relationships or significant codes uh, and they will just delete that from the particular model. So ideally you would want to meet that specific threshold on whatever model that you are using uh, so that you could tailor the model so it can just predict what you want to predict in a more, um, I guess, clear cut manner. So after we interpret the model, um, yeah, so there's a few other things. These are these are pretty important as well. Uh, this is the p-value on the overall model on whether or not it's significant. Uh, and just know that the null hypothesis, uh, null hypothesis, is whether or not your beta x values are equal to zero. Um, and then ideally we want to reject that. So that is your alternative hypothesis um, so your beta x does not equal to zero so ideally we want the alternative hypothesis to not equal zero otherwise your coefficients are worthless and you don't need it so once we do that 
Uh, let us do another function. This is the ANOVA table on your values. This produces a really neat table on where you typically would have to do everything by hand, do sum of squares, do mean squares, that sort of thing. Uh, but it produces everything right here. So you don't typically need to do that. Um, and yeah, so it just goes into depth on what that particular analysis of variance table is going to be. So really neat function over there. So after that, uh, let us get getting the coefficients of the values so that we can plot it and see what the data looks like in terms of their linear model that we have just created. So let's do this. We will plot the carbohydrates, which is our X, and then our Y, which we are trying to predict is calories. So let's get the mains equal to carbs versus calories. And see if that is equal. So we get our data set back over here. And then we want to use this function, the abline function. We would abline it with the model. Uh, we let's color it like red or some sort. Um, and then we can do this function right here. These are just typical R formatting, so the length, width, and dimension. Uh, you can look up the guide on what those specific dimensions correspond to but it's essentially just like making your lines fatter or skinnier, darker, etc. So that is what that particular model is going to be. So along that linear relationship, uh, that d depicts what each of your predicted values could be. Um, so as we can see, it, it sort of does really well on, you know, in the middle over here, as we can see, but toward the end or toward our outliers, we have points that are just sticking out and obviously like our predicted values on the red line are not going to be as accurate um, on, you know, compared to the values that we see up here. So, so in order to judge whether or not our values are within a specific interval, I would typically use a confidence interval where essentially 95% of our values will fall between a range of values that we find. So I already did um, some testing on whether or not that will, that will look like, but in general, there's a really neat function on the confidence interval function where you just pass in your confine of your model and then it would just output you know these values so 95 percent of our values in this case really related to our intercept will fall in between these two values and 95 percent of our values will fall between these two values for the carbohydrates so to wrap up this essentially our linear relationship model linear or linear model is equal to the carbohydrates or let me just pull up the the summary right here uh it's equal to the so we have carbs is equal to the intercept which is 67.5254 uh you add that to your carbohydrates where note that each of the values your carbs and carbohydrates are numerical values please take note on that uh, so basically your carbs, carbohydrates, carbohydrates, you multiply that by your coefficient, which is 7.2368. And that is the model that your linear model has created. And our confidence interval states that our, our values would typically fall in between these two ranges uh, so that our model can be as, uh, I guess, robust as possible. Or it can tell you what uh, your predictions will fall into later down the road. So uh, the very last thing that you want to do is to detach your data set so that uh, when you are referencing values such as the beater values like brand, you won't get brand over here. You can't find it. So that is it for today. So that pretty much concludes what I had to say about linear regression. Uh, everything that I put into this video is pretty much all you really need for the use of linear regression. Uh, so I hope you guys definitely enjoyed uh, so stay tuned on what future projects or tutorials I might put out there. And please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much. Um, please let me know if you like it.